This is Omar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Gerald Miller, it's been a minute. It's been a minute, been a minute. What's good, IFL TV? What's cracking? It's good. I'm in your hometown. I'm in Brooklyn. We in Brooklyn, man. You're downtown Brooklyn, Flatbush. Yeah. It ain't like it used to be, but you know. <laughs> what do you mean? It's different down here, man. You know, you got a bunch of out-of-towners and hippies and shit, so it ain't the Brooklyn like I grew up in Brooklyn. It's a little different now, but it's cool, though. You know what I mean? It's cool. As I mentioned, uh, it's been a minute and uh, you've signed with a new promoter, top mm -hmm. rank Bob Arum. Talk to him about it. How did it come about, Jura? Um, You know, a bunch of promoters reached out and um, the one that seemed more serious was Bob at the time. Um, we were hearing from other people in top rank that they wanted to make a deal. I wasn't too enthusiastic about the top rank deal at first. And um, not till I actually got flown out to Vegas and sat down and talked to Bob and, you know, hear his ideas and, you know, how he just you know, talked very animated about the whole situation, you know, I was like, you know what, I think Tyrone might be the move, you know, so it wasn't until, it wasn't until I actually sat down in front of Bob, I talked to Bob over the phone before, but when the deal came across, it wasn't directly coming from Bob, so when I met with Bob face to face, and it was so funny when I was meeting with Bob, Frank Warren was coming out of another office that day, and I was like, oh, Frank is over here, so, and then soon after you heard about the Tyson Fury deal, and that was months ago, this is like, middle of last year so it took some time to get the deal done but um you know we're here now and um you know we were going to be on the undercard for Tyson Free Deontay Wilder we're going to be called main event for that but you know Dimitri Salida kind of like just messed that whole deal up you know what I mean it was it was it was it was, it was, a, it was a lot of things I, like, I never hold my mouth so you know what I mean I, I see how it's really you still mean. working with Dimitri? No I have nothing to do with Dimitri anymore Dimitri's going to be collecting a check from Bob, or for whatever Bob cut is, you know, from, you know, what the deals that we work out, but I have nothing to do with Demetrius Leader or Greg Cohen. Um, thank God that, that situation's finally over. But, um, yeah, man, so it's, it's like a lot, you know, a lot of little fishy things that, that going on in boxing, you know, over the last year or so that I've had to learn on my own again and figure out. So, you know, it's the game, but don't believe everything you always hear, you know? Seems like a new chapter in your life then, Joe. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. You know what I mean? Doors closed, doors open. The main thing is always maintaining, you know, physical peak and just, and just you know, doing your homework, you know? I'm a big person of doing homework. You know, unfortunately, you know, what happened last time wasn't enough homework, but, you know, we, we learn from those things and we're coming back to be bigger and better, you know? Mm. So ESPN top rank it is. You said there was a, a lot of other promoters coming yeah. in for you. Correct. Were you speaking to Eddie Hearn much, Joe? The thing with Eddie is, Eddie's a hypocrite. And that's 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 what bothers me about certainly because my thing was this right when I went to see Eddie one or two times, like I said, I've, I'm in contact with people on Matchroom side, and I know people that's on the zone side. So, you know, a lot of people hit me say, "We want to continue working with you, want to figure out a situation." So, out of due respect for the zone, I've never went out on the media as you can see from before, and never said anything bad about Matchroom or nothing like that. Even though when Eddie was slandering my name in the media, I never went back and said anything crazy because out of respect I said you know what okay it's my fault I made a mistake cool no problem I'm gonna deal with it suck it up but the way I'm raised the way I grew where I come from if you're a real man you talk it like a man sometimes we me you have an issue we're gonna deal with it you don't go on camera then when you see me in face you smile and giggling, giggling. Well, I'm smiling giggling too don't get it wrong because I understand it's, it's, it's a game at the same time I respect that I'm gonna respect you keep moving but don't five minutes later you get on camera and you want to stand on my name, throw me under the bus because you're trying to save face with the zone. That's all it really came down to. Him basically was throwing my name under the bus to, to save face with the zone. Now, I'm not that, I'm not a hypocrite. You know, that's my whole thing. What particular comments from Eddie did you find most hypocritical? Because, you know, many fighters on his roster that he worked with have been caught with PDs before. And the whole thing about my whole story was there's research behind my whole thing. A lot of people don't understand that when I went, when the whole thing originally came out, I was the one that asked to be tested because I know I was a clean guy. I'm always doing the right, proper thing. I've never had any problem before with that kind of stuff. So for him to come out and he always talks to fire. Like I never talked to Eddie a day since the whole news came out until I seen when he came to New York. He didn't call me one time. He didn't call nobody in my team and ask a question. He didn't do anything. He cut all communication off. So I said, okay, it is what it is. I mean, that's the kind of way he want to act. It's, it's, it is what it is. But when I when you when you start doing your homework and I start understanding deals that were made under the table to take the AJ fight at a certain time because I had elbow surgery scheduled for February of 2019. So I'm trying to say and we had a fight Bogon Dinu, which is this uh, November. 
that he said we're going to fight again in January. And then I told him, after January, I want to have surgery on my elbow, which is February. Um, he says, okay, no problem. You know, corner where if I didn't take the fight, I'm losing a big opportunity. You know, I talk mad smack. So for me, I'm going to fight opportunity. I'm, I want to take it. But at the same time, I've been dealing with an injury elbow from when I fought Marius Wack. And a lot of people knew that I beat Marius Wack, the Polish fighter, with one hand if you watched that fight. And I told people many things people about it. But I continued fighting to build my recognition, you know, make some money. And um, when everything started to fall apart and, I, and the fight didn't happen in January, I take the ball gone, didn't you fight? I put, postponed the ball gone, didn't you fight? They take the AJ fight. So I'm trying to say. So I was in a corner where I, I passed my first, first test, no pound flying colors. And then when the whole second test came out, I said, listen, this is some BS. Test me again. Test me again. And that's when Vada tests me again. And that's when the HGC, H- H- HPO, and all that stuff came out. And when you start doing your research on it, a lot of people don't do the homework on these substances. And that's, that's a problem that I understand. And now I'm talking with Vada and, and figuring out what's the best way of going and doing, doing these things the proper way. Because what you read on these, these components or compounds is not exactly what it is. These components are meant to help strengthen of, 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 of joints, help rebuilding of muscle tissue. And that's what it was in the shot that I took. And even when I went to Victor Conti, who was the president of Snack Fitness, and he ran my blood tests and my and, and um, my um, my drug my blood tests and all my levels, he says your body's nowhere near of anything of a bodybuilder or somebody that's cheating. I said because it was one shot that I took that I had to take to make me feel better for training camp. It was nothing for me to build muscle like so. When people get these homeworks, and I start telling people that's in the boxing game, and they see the actual paperwork and fail, like bro, like. Why wouldn't Eddie Hearn do it? I'm like, you know what it is? Because he knew it looked bad on him with the whole the zone of the fight blowing up his face. He needed an escape goal. So I became the escape goal. That's what I'm trying to say. So I took it for what it is. But like I said, at the end of the day, I'm a real man. And I never I never made no excuses about it. I said, you know what? It's still on my part. I made a mistake. I took the shot. Okay, cool. But don't make it seem like what I did was like the worst thing on the planet. Like I gotta eat that for the, I gotta eat that for the rest of my life until I until I come back. But you got other fighters that are being caught with hardcore bodybuilding drugs like hardcore Billy Joe Saunders or Canelo like it's, it happens all the time it shit, shit happens mistakes happen I get it but when you man up from it and you move on and you start to work and you gotta prove people wrong that's part of the game you know but my thing is this I don't care who failed that's on them my thing is if you're a man you're a man of your word don't be a hypocrite you know what I mean he's worked with ton of fighters from when the other heavyweight um, that fought Anthony Joshua and it, it's like two years before that news even came out the Molina Oh, Eric Molina. Molina. You know what I'm trying to say? You got Povetkin. You got Morris Wack. The list can go on from the people he worked with. But I'm trying to say, when you have somebody that speaks out against certain things and he's going to look bad, you don't want to look like a hypocrite. You're going to use him as a goal. So, you know, it is what it is, man. It's a learning experience. But it's also taught me about boxing, again, that you can't trust no promoter in this game. But I felt like, like I said, even Ace said, you know, I felt like Jarrell was a friend. I felt like Eddie was a friend. But for, for when that whole situation come out and for somebody to kind of just out you like that without even talking to you at all, you know, it reminds you that, hey, this is business and nobody gives an F about you. So that's the reason why you went on Instagram and put that picture saying fraud. Yeah, he's a hypocrite. Big hypocrite. Big, super duper hypocrite. And like I said before, it ain't going to be the first or last time we're going to see this. He's done it before. But it is what it is. My thing is this. You're going to be a, be, be a man, be a man in your word. So I'm trying to say, if you're going to want to talk to me, you're going to talk. But don't say something to me behind closed doors and you get on camera act the fool. And I'm here remind me of P. Diddy. In the early 90s and 2000, when P. Diddy was talking all this shit, the, yo, it's all about love, but they go on camera, he dis- discredited other, other other acts. You know what I mean? At the same time, he want to be all up in the video. He want to show his face off. You know what I'm trying to say? And the thing about media is people don't care about the truth like they used to. They only care about who has the more, more, more influence. You know what I'm trying to say? The biggest and voice. The biggest voice, correct. So instead of them listening and say, hey, big baby, this is what's going on. Listen, they're going to listen to the person with the most Instagram following, which is Eddie Hearn. He has the most influence, so they're going to follow him now. That's what he said. So so I feel, you know, it is what it is. I just feel like UK fans, you know, like I said, I always apologize. I say I apologize to all US fans, the, the UK fans for the fight that happened. But like I said, you can't hold a good person out. And I know my heart's clean. I know I'm a good person. And anybody that knows me and knows Big Baby knows that I'm, a, I'm the real deal. That's what I'm trying to say. So it is what it is, man. But don't be a hypocrite, man, because sooner or later, they're going to get found out. Listen, that issue is what it is, Jero, and you've signed with Top Rank and you look forward now. I do want to ask you about mm. uh, why you weren't on that Wilder Fury card and why Gerald Washington v. Charles Martin was the co-main event. So what happened is, and I'm, I'm always give you guys real information with facts. So 
my my new management team that I work with, which is Jay Prince. Shout out to whole Wasserman group in the UK. I love you guys, Dean and Damon. Still my people. We still work. Top over guys, there. Wasserman. Yeah, they, they, I love them dudes over there, man. But uh, I just I just wanted to switch it up a little things more with Jay Prince because he has a relationship with Top Rank, and he understands the American market a little bit. So anyway. Um, Dean and Damien and Washington were working on getting a deal done with, with, um, with, with top rank. It wasn't moving as fast as they wanted to move. So, hold on. How can I help you? You're parking the bicycle lane and let the bicycle guys I'm going around. So what's just happened, Gerard? You know, the traffic, we call them the, tra the traffic police, probably the most hated people in NY. They give you give your car tickets for the dumbest things, but I'm riding this a little dirty, so I ain't gonna argue with it. So it's mm -hmm. the same thing in London as well, to be fair. Oh, man. No man. one likes traffic wars. Oh man, these dudes are the worst, man. I get like three, four tickets a day messing with these dudes out there, man. But, you know, it is what it is. So I suck it up. I ain't gonna cry about it. Anyway, we're good now. Um, yeah. You were mentioning, yeah, they were putting the deal together with Top Rank, Wasserman and Yeah, Jay so Prince. um, so it kind of, it was kind of like, um, they were working their hardest to get it done. There was some stipulations with, do you, with, do you mind doing the window? Oh, the yeah. sun's coming in. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Um, they were trying to get the deal done. There were some stipulations on, on Dimitri's leader side. And, you know, Dimitri just sat on the contract for so long and was being so difficult to get the deal done. So when I brought Jay Prince in, um, at the time, it seems like early January when we started getting the deal done. And the deal was supposed to be done in around February. Even, no, early January. And um, I flew to Texas three times, got a deal done with Jay Prince. We flew to Vegas, talked to Vegas, went to Vegas. We sat down with Bob, Bob, Lord, everybody said, okay, we're good, we're gonna get it, get it done. Now this is this is how boxing works, right? This is between real, real people that understand business and people that only understand money in their pockets. So anyway, Jay Prince on the phone with his lawyer, Bob on the phone with his lawyer, uh, Greg Cohen, Dimitri, and they're on the lawyer, on the phone with their lawyer. Everybody's talking on the phone. They come with a deal. Cool. We're going to sign a contract. Boom. I'll be back February 22nd, co main event on Texas Free Undercard. And Bob honors his word. Bob says, No. Stop acting like that. Stop being a piece of shit. We're not changing the deal. You made your word, everybody. That's the deal. Long story short, the VC probably just pissed off Bob and had ESPN had to make the card as soon as possible made the announcement. I ended up getting cut off the card because a one man didn't want to finish signing the contract with his leader promotion. So that his ignorance and greed is what cost me February 22nd. So that's what it really came down to. You know what I'm trying to say? And I ended up signing the deal a day and a half later, really. You know, Greg Cohen was, you know, Greg Cohen, you know, one of the good things Greg Cohen did. Greg Cohen was like, oh, I'm like, listen, you got to sign this deal. You're messing up this boy's future and career. Like, we have a situation, we have something that's good. Don't mess it up. So finally, you know, everybody got back on, online and he finally signed the exact same deal that everybody was ready agreed upon two <laughs> days prior. You know what I'm trying to say? So that's the kind of spiteful, ignorant stuff that goes on in boxing. You know what I'm trying to say? So that was his last. Act he could ever do anything in my career. I like people don't say like I own 70% of my own promotional contract, but I still couldn't do anything 100% fully until he had signed over the other 30%. So I'm trying to say so that's what kind of hold up my delay because you think about it, I was suspended really six months, I could have came and fought back in October. So why is it now I got to make a return middle of freaking to 2020? But that's, that's, that's the problem with boxing. And you know, when you miss education and you leave, leave it up to managers and promoters without studying your homework. You know, it's always about money with these guys, man. And, and, and that's what kind of hurt the whole situation. So I'm guessing now Bob has to do a certain payoff and then that's you done with Dimitri, right? Yeah, well, well, I mean, for a certain amount of fights, Dimitri's going to get a cut from Bob. Okay. You know what I mean, that's the whole deal. You know what I mean? You know, you know there's no science science to it. And Bob already said that too. But uh, he doesn't have any control. He can't say anything about my about my career. He has have no control over no say who I fight, when I fight, what I want to do. That's all between me and my team, you know what I mean? And we correspond with top rank and we, we negotiate. But uh, like I said, it's been, it's been clear cut language with those guys, you know. You know, Bob's from Brooklyn, man. So, you know, it's, it's been, Bob tells me, yeah, this is, yeah, this is a mess of a situation, but we're going to get through it, you know. So that's that's the real thing I like about Bob is that um, man, he's been real from the jump. From the time I first, first I sat down with him, he's like, listen, man, the past is the past. I believe in you and we got to do it in the right way this time and do all your homework, you know, and that was it. So they've shown you a lot of faith then, yeah. Yeah, 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 man. I think I think like I said before, after my first fight when I come that's why they wanted me so bad to be come back in Fred twenty second because, you know, everybody's gonna be watching this card. Everybody's gonna see, you know. So, you know, it it it, it was uh it was definitely a speed bump in the road. But, you know, it is what it is and and it's a learning lesson again. 
of dealing with the proper people in boxing, you know, and 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 it's, it's always sometimes the people you know the best that will hurt you the most, you know. Like I know Demetrius Lee since I was 16 years old, you know, we had the same trainer for a little while and he got to promote your business. But that should show you that sometimes you have faith in people, but at the end of the day, the dollar to some people is worth more than respect. Okay, so that Wilder Fury two thing gone now. Yeah. There is a big card I think top rank I'm going to put on at the Garden with uh -huh. Lomachen Lomachenko and correct. Lopez. That's a huge fight. Uh -huh. um, May 30th, I think correct, the rumor correct, is. Correct. So we can assume you're going to be on that card, Jarrell? Um, yes, it's, it's it's looking very strong that that might be the the Comey event card I make my return on as of right now. It's not 100 percent yet, but um, that's the date we're looking at right now and. Um, we're trying to get at least two, three fights in. We got three fights for the year, but as they want top rank at ESPN is picking the right cards and how we want to maneuver. And um, yeah, I think I think that would be the first card to really come back on right now. At this point, that makes really the most sense. I guess you're gonna have no fight is easy, but you're gonna have a few tune-up fights, Jura. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't. We don't have the exact opponent um, yet. They were talking talk about cards to come first. Okay, um, Takam so wouldn't. I mean, he's world level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know. Um, we don't know who's after that. You know, we were eyeing Manuel Char and Trevor Bryan for W regular belt. When are they going to fight? I don't have no idea. You know, that's another, <laughs> that's a whole other hot mess by itself. You know what I mean? So It's been going on for about three years, that man, situation. You, man, psh, tell you, man, boxing is all, always about <laughs> who got the bigger pockets, man, sometimes, man. But, you know, you know, my main thing is like me. I tell, I tell a lot of young kids, man that nothing in life goes the way you plan it sometimes. There's always going to be speed bumps in the road. And you have to think about it like this. Whatever you want, you got to keep fighting. You got to keep coming forward because there's always going to be somebody saying something. There's always going to be a hater. There's always going to be some kind of distraction. It's never going to be the perfect time. Never going to be the perfect time. And the best thing you can do is to keep your blind focus on Let's focus on you and focus on what you want and the goals in front of you because... You know, you don't watch the next man on what they're doing. That's the quickest way to get distracted. Let's focus on yourself and we're going to get there. Well, look at Tyson Fury putting a 10 out of 10 performance the yeah, other night. Yeah. And now people saying he was cheating using gloves man, that weren't man, right or something. Listen, man, I, I'm going to tell you something, man. I know I'm sparred with Tyson. I sparred with Deontay. I sparred with a ton of guys. and I've talked to them. I know their aura, their persona. Listen, even Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury had a failed drug test, you know. Tyson Fury was on, you know, on, on, you know, I think it was on, we called the white girl for a while and going through his mental issues. And that man fought his way back out of that. And I don't, I don't think in my heart, in my mind, the way I, I, I know Tyson, that's not him to go put nothing in his glove. You know, he's not going to risk all that he just helped build to, you know, to blow it like that. You know what I mean? So I think it's old BS that they're trying to just, you know, put stuff out there. The playing, I don't, even if Tyson Fury fought Deontay basically with one hand, I think Tyson would have still whooped his behind. That's what I'm trying to say. Just for the simple fact, Tyson already convicted in his self, his mind, his spirit, that I'm going in, I'm knocking this dude out. That's what I'm trying to say. So no matter what Deontay, Deontay would have done, he would have got his ass whooped. If he'd have walked in without the vest, he still would have got his behind whooped. That's what I'm trying to say. So all that extra talking and walking with a 45 pound vest and then, the Joe Rogan video a year before that, I trade with, it's just a bunch of bullshit, man. You know what I'm trying to say? And that's why a lot of people don't really gravitate to Deontay because, like, he talks with a certain demeanor that's so fake. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, he's not real. Like, Tyson Fury, we all know, is a gullible, funny, he's a clown, he's hysterical, but that's who he who he is. You know, you know Big Baby, I can crack jokes, I can be fun, but if I'm serious, I'm, a, I'm just going to walk away from him. I'm ready to knock somebody's head off. So you know who fighters and what fighters are serious and what they're really about, but when you got somebody like Deontay, man, he was a freaking fraud. Sometimes, what, the whole way long? Yo, man, he's, yo, for the time he got some paper, and he, you might use the same thing always saying sometimes, yo, you always a sucker. And when you become, when you get money, you just sucker with some money. And that's what it came down to. You just sucker with some bread because the way you act, the way you treat people on your team, no matter how, you treat everybody the same. That's how I tell people all the time. It don't matter if you're the poorest guy on the corner or the mother, the mother effer in the White House. Treat everybody the same. I tell people all the time. I tell even my nephews, a bullet don't care about who you are. A bullet changes direction your whole entire life. So remember that. Everybody got can put that pressure on a, on, a, on a trigger. So respect everybody the same way. And he's just different, man. He's just different, man. Mm -hmm. That Martin Luther King speech he did was like the biggest BS in Black History Month. His Black History, like, <laughs> he got his ass with Black History Month. Like, his black car has been revoked. You know what I mean? Put it like that. Well, in that video, yeah, he, he said that he's going to become king again. Obviously, he blamed the costume, which you've pointed oh, out. Man, a How does that third fight go? He still gets his ass whooped. 
It's really good. Gonna get Fury stoppage again. He's still going to Man, man sir, Fury still going to I don't win. This is not going to get his ass whooped. You understand? Even he, Deontay said to many other people, I would never fight Big Baby. I already know that. Why? Because there's some hater race, some hater shit in his heart about a female, number one. And number two is that he know I'm coming for his neck. I'm coming for his neck. I'm coming for blood. He talk all that. I'm going to kill. Nah, nah, he ain't, he not built like that, bro. He not built like this. I'm trying to say so. When you, when, when you supposed to say I'm not going to fight me because of whatever his thoughts are, he already got some punk in him. So I'm trying to say. And Tyson got his number now. That's it. He's over with. He can't box. He can't throw a jab. He don't got no footwork. And them things take years to learn. So for him to come back in July after getting your ass with a couple months ago, you need about the ass with he took, you need about a good two months of rest. And they need another three, four months to get back in really good shape you know, for every title fight. So in that time, really, Ray's really going to learn some new techniques. So I'm trying to say it takes months. It takes years to learn certain things in boxing that, that will watch for eye, that boxing IQ. And he don't got it. He don't got it right now. So I'm trying to say, so Floyd Mayweather coming in and helping him, yeah, that's good publicity. But Floyd ain't going to teach him shit. He don't have that Floyd Mayweather. He don't have that boxing fundamental. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, man, to me, he still get his ass whooped. And I told people all the time, I said, listen, if he landed a big shot, yeah, I think he can beat Tyson. But if Tyson started boxing on him, Tyson going to beat him. And Tyson put the pressure on him. So he he did he did excel more than what I thought and a lot of other people thought. Joe, you know you mentioned how Tyson seems very real. Uh, Deontay, he said, it's fake. We've seen Joshua kind of change his character when he's around you. Mm. Very loud and, you know, was being aggressive with mm. you. He's not normally like that with his opponents. What do you think because about he, Joshua's character? Because you got to understand, he, he got to he gotta put that front on. He got to put... So you, but you think he's fake as well? Listen, he's, he's another fraud. You know what I mean? Like, he, he puts a nice guy attitude on, but behind closed doors, he want to talk shit about people. Man, be real all the time. If you're an asshole in the daylight, be an asshole at nighttime. You know what I'm trying to say? But my thing was him, he has to be this persona. And I get it. You know, he has to live a certain way. I get it. But... When somebody really coming for you, you have no, you have to fight fire with fire sometimes. And he felt like that's his best way. It was a fighting fire with fire. And I was going to smoke his ass. Sometimes like so, you know. Is that fight going to happen one day? If he, if he keeps the belts yet, yeah. you know what I mean? Because the, the, the route that we got with top rank right now, we're going to get a title shot soon. You know what I'm trying to say? I think less, more or less than a year, we're going to get another title shot. No, no doubt in my mind. Um, if he keeps onto the belts, I don't know, because, you know, everybody, every time he gets hit, it's like his legs turn to noodles. That's what I'm trying to say. And I don't see him beating Tyson Fury. I still don't see him beating Deontay Wilder. Um, what about the Pulev fight? Um, it's a it's definitely a winnable fight for him, but Pulev can crack, too. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's not the easiest fight in the world. You know what I mean? This do-rag is killing my head, boy. You know what I mean? Yeah, UK guys, one thing I know about this, this, this do-rag stuff. How much? Oof. A little something, something. You know what I mean? This... Keep it in here fresh and clean, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, something, something. But, um, yeah, man, it's a, lot, it's a lot of things in boxing, man. You never know, man. So if uh, Tyson and Anthony do get it on, that mm -hmm. is what Eddie wants for the end of the year. Obviously, uh, Anthony's got to come through Kubra, and Tyson's got to beat mm -hmm. Wilder again in the third fight. Do you fancy Fury from what I'm hearing from you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think Fury's the hardest guy in the division to beat. And I always said that. I think Fury's always the hardest guy in the division to beat. But I love Tyson, but Tyson ain't doing nothing to me in the ring. He know this. You know, big baby ain't no joke. There's sparring stories between you. Yeah. And oh, him, but not, not that's the Tyson was saying that shit when he first came back on the scene to get some buzz going. Cause my name was, you know, up there at the time, and uh, somebody knocked me down seven times. Never happened. Ever happened. Tyson, don't lie, brother. Come on, baby, don't lie. It seems but, uh, that there's like a bit of respect between the pair of you two. Though. Yeah. No, me and Tyson. You know what it was because it's 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 competitive competition, but it's also a respect there because me and Tyson, I don't, we never got to that point where it was really disrespectful. And I'm not, he's not the kind of person you can really hate, is what I'm trying to say. And once you get to know me, I'm not the kind of person you can really hate because you know me. But if you don't know me, I have a shell. I'm just like, I'm not going to smile and giggle with you if I don't know you. You know what I mean? And that's and that's that New York attitude too. It's like, motherfucker, I don't know you. You're not coming in the club with me. You know what I mean? So it's not till y'all get to know you, you get to know me. Like, oh, Big Baby's one of the coolest dudes out here. You know what I mean? But Tyson Free is always like that. He's always laid back. He's kind of cool and, you know, he's a generous guy. But, um, yeah, it's always going to be respect. You know what I mean? And it's not just him. It's me and Andy Ruiz. You know what I mean? And he just had, you know, a little stuff on camera a couple years ago. But behind closed doors, man, it was like, you know, I understand his background be from Mexico and my family's from Belize and we had a conversation talking about construction and it was one of those things that 
Yo, we're cool. I'm, you know what I mean? It was nothing but love. Just to park another heavyweight. Nothing but love. No disrespect. There's just certain guys give a different persona. You know what I mean? And you can tell if it's genuine or in real if it's not. And then some dudes just playing dickheads. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's just how it is, you know? Well, let me ask you about sort of the the fighters outside of what we've spoken. We've spoken about Deontay, Anthony, and Tyson. There's obviously Dylan White and Kalnaki who fights Correct. this Saturday night. Andy Ruiz. Where do these guys fit in your career? I have absolutely nothing to say about Adam Kornaki. I mean, Adam and Andy obviously with PBC. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. I think I, it'd be a good fight. You know, I'm, you know, they they both good friends of mine. You know, Adam is like that's my brother, so I'm gonna pull for Adam more a little more than Andy Ruiz because that's my brother. We've been rocking since we 14, 15 years old. Oh, really? You yeah, know, yeah, for a long time. Yeah, man. long time. So, but um, they like say that PBC side. They're both with PBC, so you just have a top rank. It does complicate that. Yeah, yeah, but I don't even even if even if me and Adam were to bump heads, we wouldn't fight each other. You know what I'm trying to say? Like that would be we talked about it for years ago. We said it's like we're not gonna fight each other until it's like crazy money line and we got belts. You know and I mean, it's not it's not something like that. You know, I think me me and Andy would probably be a fight to be made easier than me and Adam could way before Adam Kornaki fight. You know, but like I said before, they don't have a belt. I don't have a belt, so that fight's not gonna happen anytime soon. You know what I'm trying to say, so you know, but we'll see. You know, the playing field, the heavyweight division is still wide open. You know, everybody looks vulnerable as hell. You know what I mean? But like I said, man, <laughs> once I get that first fight out of the way, man, all all hell's gonna let loose. I know you and Dylan have exchanged words before. Mm -hmm. Do you have a bit of sympathy though for a situation? He's been waiting a long time for this world title shot. I mean, I do. I mean, I do in some for in, in, in some ways. You know, I think he does deserve a shot. And Eddie Hearn knows how to tweak his way of words and manipulate a certain story and make it. Now, nah, you know what I mean. So I get it. I get it. But he deserves, I think he definitely deserves a shot. Is you know who's gonna fight him? I don't know. You know. You know AJ has the belts for so long. Why don't he fight AJ for the belt again? So I'm trying to say. So Eddie Hearn can talk all that crap, but then why doesn't he give a make a fight? They're both in this table. Is what I'm trying to say. But he's trying to get that WC belt, and now you know Tyson Fury has it. So, you know Eddie, 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 Eddie say things, but he does things a little, you know, on to favor him. I've got to ask you, Joe. Yeah. Eddie has come out and said that you were desperate to re-sign with him. Desperate? No. Okay. The reason why. And you can look, he can send you all, he like, he like talking about WhatsApp messages because that's what he does. He's, a, he's, a, he's like, a, like we, call him, we call him a female. I like to gossip. Exact words. I said, Eddie, I have a relationship not only with you and Matchroom Boxing and The Zone. I like the staff. I love the Matchroom staff. They're great guys. I love The Zone as a company. I think it's a great company. They have a great product. And everything, everything was like this, right? We have, we, we have, you have like a unity there, right? I said, listen, they should, when the thing blows over, we figure this out. I want to come back to you guys. Let's figure out the game plan. Oh, cool. We can start talking about it, blah, blah, blah. We can figure out how to make it work. But then he go on camera and say some hypocritical shit. And you didn't say it to my face. And he would never he would never come to my face and say, oh, you you this, you that. He would never do that. Kyle. Not, not only, he, not, he don't have no kind of balls to come say it to my face. I would slap the fire out of him if he disrespect me in my face. Like That's number one. So he's going to sit down on camera, but he would never come to my face and say that. That's number one. The problem is... I respect the zone. I respect the company. I say, you know what? Listen, I want to work with you guys first. But sometimes I say, but by him coming out and being so blasphemous with his words, he kind of shut the door on that. Oh, I can't do that because the big baby failed and blah, blah, blah. But one of the other countless fighters you work with. So I'm trying to say, so that's the hypocrite problem I'll tell you about. He's trying to save face for himself. But that's 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 that that it is what it is. Sometimes it's what it is. But yeah, I definitely want to go that route first because I felt like you know what, it's a good engine. The zone has a good product. It makes sense. But then when you come down, you start thinking nobody's getting more views than ESPN, especially in the states. Nobody's getting promotional runs and 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 constant commercial turns than ESPN. Sometimes so. Or Fox. Fox is doing really good too on, on certain. Yeah. Did products. Al Heyman and PBC talk to you? Um, yes, I told you Alan, Bob, um, I mean, Alan, PBC, and, you know, they had a problem working with Slita, Demetrius Slita. A lot of promoters don't like working with Demetrius Slita, you know, and you can see why in my situation that he's a very difficult person to work with because you have smart business choices and you have, what's the word I'm looking for, just ignorant business choices. Sometimes I say based on what they want and not what's better for everybody. So no, Al didn't want to do anything with um, eventually deal with Dimitri. Uh, people offered to buy Dimitri out, and of course, you know he, he was on a standstill with that. But don't worry, Bob. Now you know I, I think it's, I think it's gonna be a, a 
an amazing run. You know what I mean? I just feel like once I get the first fight back, then that's all. That's, it's gonna start off the for the marathon. So it could be Carlos Takan. That's what I heard the last time. You know, there's a couple of names, but um, we'll see Carlos Takan fought here in the states on Saturday. Um, he won a decision, so um, no, he's in the gym, so you know, be a good fight. Okay, I was told before I came out uh, mm. it's gonna be freezing in New York and Brooklyn. It was. Weather's beautiful. Oh, was it? Was, it? it was. It was. It was freezing a little bit last week, but the last two days have been pretty good. So you got lucky, bro. Yeah, I did. You I got did. Real lucky. I did. I thought I'd have been bought worse weather from the UK, but nah, nah. Nah. I heard UK is pretty good weather right now too. Or is it cold? It's up, always up and down. Up and down. Always up and down. Yeah. When are you coming back to the UK? I don't know, man. Would you I, like I, to fight? I know you just signed with ESPN and stuff. Would you like to fight in the UK? Yeah, one? hell yeah, I would love to definitely fight in the UK. Um, actually, Washam Dean and Damon Washam are actually trying to figure out when would be the best time to come back over there. So that's something I got to talk to them about and figure out. You know, we test start testing the waters out. We start doing some promo stuff. Like I said, I think I think you know my main concern for me is not even talking. Cause I can always talk smack. I can make promo videos. I can do massive. But for me, is not only on the promotion side. Me as a fighter, I want to have a fight first. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not letting that prove it to myself. I want to prove to the fans and to the world, like, nigga, whatever happened was a mistake. Sometimes I'm like, you kiss my black ass. Like, watch, watch me knock this fool out. You know what I mean? So I feel like after I get the first fight of the way, things will start turning a little more faster. You start seeing Big Baby, Baby a lot more. We start doing a lot more promo stuff with ESPN. But like we said before, that first fight was going to be February 22nd, and one person messed it up. So now we got to kind of re collaborate the machine and, you know, figure everything out. Okay, well, Joe, best of luck in preparation ahead of May 30th, if it is then. Let's do it. Let's um, do it. You're going to be at the Barclays for Adam on Saturday? Um, unfortunately, it does not look like I will be there. I have some family issues outside of the country. I have to go take urgent care of. Okay. Uh, I can't say exactly where I'm going because it's top secret. But um, what can I say is that, uh, man, I love you guys. You fish and chips, you English muffins in the UK. I love you guys, man. Tyson, congrats once again. Eddie, you biggest hypocrite on the planet. Uh, Demetrius Lee, they can go kick rocks. And everybody else, I don't believe in Big Baby, can kiss my black ass. But I'll be back real soon. Gerald Miller, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. And I'm sure we're going to catch up with you soon, all right? All day, baby. Let's get it. Money.